Well, good morning, ladies and gentlemen. It's really such a thrill to be here. I've been coming for 25 years, and it is so exciting and so impressive to see how our knowledge of the Coco de Mer and the Valley de Mer has increased leaps and bounds over that period. When the Seychelles was, when the Coco de Mer was very first discovered in the mid 1800s, and ever since, people have been asking the question, how long does it live? They, they thought maybe it was a very long-lived tree, but how old? And there are all kinds of wild speculations in the literature, from a few hundred years to 800 years to over a 1,000 years. But none of these, or almost none of these, were based on any kind of data or evidence at all. And in 2009, the SIF decided that they really needed some good data about how fast the trees grow and how long they live for as a basis for management. So enough of speculation, it was time to collect some data. And what I'm going to describe is a few results from a monitoring program that SIF began in 2009. It was a big team project. Many, many people contributed. All the hard work, by the way, was done by people other than myself. I, 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 I had the pleasure to analyze the data and, and write it up. But all the real hard work of collecting the data were other, by other people. And these are the co-authors of the paper, which is currently being considered for publication. And the method we used was based upon how many leaf scars are produced by a tree. Because it so happens that palms produce leaves rather regularly. And if you know the time between leaf scars, and you know how many leaf scars there are, you can make a, a rough guess of the age of a tree. So that was the method. And it was really <coughs> a big monitoring project. Um, we divided the trees into five groups. There were seedlings, small plants with up to three leaves, juveniles, which are the plants with their leaves coming up from the ground, immature plants, which are beginning to produce a trunk, but still have not yet flowered. We don't know whether they're male or female yet. And then mature trees, which can, of course, be either females or they can be males. And because the tree grows so slowly, <coughs> this was a long-term project, a major undertaking by SIF. We did the work for, two, for eight years. Um, over 1,200 leaves were marked. Maybe it doesn't sound very much, but remember that each time you have to go up a ladder and find the leaf and measure it. And we recorded... We, we, we found a, a, a bayonet which was just emerging, made a mark on it, came back three months later and said, how far has the, 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 the mark moved as the leaf pushes out? So that was the basic method. And it was possible to collect data for both the Valle de May and Curieuse, but I'm only going to talk about the Valle de May. And the first result I'll show you is, <coughs> yes, indeed, Coco de Mer leaves grow very slowly. This is the, the time taken for the leaves to emerge. So along the x-axis, we have the time in years, and on the y-axis, we have the length of the leaves. <clears throat> and what you can see is that the male and female, that's the M and F, they grow fairly fast. It takes about two years, just over two years, for a leaf to push out to reach its full size. The immature trees, that's the eye, they take rather longer, um, takes more like three years for the leaf to push out. And of course, the immature leaves are much longer because they have these great long petioles. And then the juveniles, that's the J, they take much longer. It takes six years on average. By the way, these are just examples. These are just leaves that I chose. But six years in this case for, oh, thank you. It takes six years <coughs> for the leaf to expand, and very similarly for the seedling leaves, the S. So they grow slowly. <clears throat> and they also live for a long time. And uh, this is our estimates of how long the leaves live, live for. And you can see that the seedlings, that's the S, um, a seedling leaf lives about 12 years on average. There's a lot of variation, some much shorter, others longer. The juvenile leaves, 
Those are down in the shades. They're growing very slowly. An amazing average of 26 years for a single leaf, the lifespan of a single leaf. Some of them were over 40. So growing very, very slowly in the shade. Then, of course, the leaf is pushing up onto the canopy, gets more light, it can grow faster. And there the leaves are about 10 years, perhaps, on average. And then it settles down. The, the tree is now up in the light. It's, it's, it, it, and then a kind of regular pattern sets in. And uh, both the male and the female trees don't differ, really. And they produce about one leaf every six months. So you can say, very roughly, they make two leaves a year. Um, and, and so, the, 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 um, the, 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 sorry, I've said the wrong thing. The male and the female, those leaves, leaves live for about five years, um, which, by the way, is longer than recorded for any other forest palm anywhere in the world. So these trees are growing very slowly. Thank you. And um, this is the most important graph as far as our method is concerned, because what we show here is how the interval between... Um, one leaf and the next. And remember, that's the way for aging the trees. If you know that a leaf um, is produced every six months, um, and if the tree is going to produce three leaves, then, uh, the, 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 then you can estimate an age of 18 months, for example. So we have um, uh, the, the seedling leaves, an interval of over four years between the leaves, and then it gets faster. If in the juvenile plants, about every two years or so, um, a new leaf is produced. In the, in, um, uh, the immature, it's about every year. And then it settles down to about every six months, or two leaves um, per year. And that's the basis for aging. So that if in a, um, a seedling stage, as I said, you've got three leaves, and they're produced every four years, then you can say the seedling stage lasts for 12 years. Um, and if you have uh, 12 leaves in the juvenile phase, um, and they're produced at um, just two and a half leaf, uh, one leaf every two and a half years, you can say the juvenile phase lasts for 30 years. So that's the method. And from that, we can estimate the, very roughly, the age of the trees. Um, but it would be nice if we could estimate the age of the trees from their height, because, of course, counting the leaf scars on a very tall tree is not easy. It's much easier to measure the height. And if we measure the height, can we estimate um, how old the trees are um, from its height? Question then is, how much increase in height is there for every leaf? And at first, when I started, I thought it was just even that the trees grew up regularly, making about 12 centimeters of height increase with every leaf. But then we made some measurements, and it turned out that was not the case at all. When the trees are quite small, they produce perhaps um, six um, centimeters of trunk per leaf. Then they're a bit bigger, and they produce maybe 15 centimeters of trunk per leaf. And then, as they get much taller, the increment per leaf goes right down. So it goes down ultimately to about three centimeters or 2.75 centimeters, just a little bit like that. And you can see that change in the trunk. If you look on the left-hand side, you've got a bit of trunk which is um, fairly low down and it's growing fast and it's making about so much height per leaf. Um, and then in the middle, it's not so clear, the leaf scars, but it's higher up and it's making maybe six centimeters per leaf. And then right up at the top, you can see on the right-hand side, the trunk looks completely different. It's making perhaps 2.5, 2.75 centimeters per leaf. And so there's a very clear pattern, and you have to take that into account, again, if you want to estimate the age of the trunks. And so you can use that as a basis for estimating the age of the trees. That's the good news. The bad news is that there's an enormous amount of variation. And in this diagram, you can see it. The central line, the central red line, is the middle value, the median value. And you can see that in seedlings, a seedling grows stage as a middle value, takes about 12 years. And then you get to the juvenile phase, and at the end of the juvenile phase, when the trunk is appearing, is it at about 43 years. And then the immature phase, when the, it's produced a trunk and it begins to flower, the end of the immature phase is at, on average, 
77 years. But do be aware that it could be much less, it could be as little as 40 years, and it could be as much as 220 years. So the bad news is, from a single tree, you simply cannot say accurately how old it is. You can say on average how old it is, but you can't say accurately. A mature tree at eight meters is about 107 years. Um, a, um, the tallest tree that we measured in the Valley de May, 28.4 meters, would have been 442 years old by our method. And, ladies and gentlemen, the tallest tree ever recorded in the, in, on Prana was 56.7 meters high, recorded, I think, in about 1860. And by our method, that would have been about 950 years. There were a few very, very tall trees, but they've disappeared. So we have a rough method for aging. And the other thing which that rough method allows us to do is to get a window into the age, into the history of the population. What can we infer about what's happened in the past? And here I'm thankful to Emma Morgan, who collected a lot of data, on very accurate data, on the height of male trees. And what we see here is that data converted into our estimate of age. And I'd ask you to ignore everything to the left of the black dotted line, because she was looking at male trees, and she ignored trees where you didn't know if they were male or female. Just the trees to the right. And two things I want you to notice. One is that the, uh, the, 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 some of the trees live a very long time. There are a few trees. There's one goes back to about 1590. That was the big tree, 28.4 meters. Um, and there are a few trees which obviously predate the, the settlement of Prala in the, in the mid-1700s. And then after that, obviously, you get more trees the younger they are. The second thing I want you to notice is that even then, there's very uneven. There's very uneven. There were years in the 1800s when there seemed to be a lot of trees germinated, and then that was followed by a big drop and then a gradual increase again. And one possibility is that that was disturbance of some kind, fire perhaps. Um, so you get a little window into the history of the, of the forest. And, and one of the interesting things that we also notice is the, the trees were growing differently. On the left picture, um, you'll see a tree, a young tree in the Valley de May now, and you'll see that the space between the scars is very large. Um, so the tree was growing up very fast. And what we learn is that the trees do that when they're in the shade. But basically, the tree, the first priority to make a big seed is to get up into the light. And if it's growing in the shade, it can't do that. So the tree is growing up as fast as it can, and there's a big increment. There's another tree of the same, same height section, and you can see that the, rings of it, uh, the, the, the leaves scars were very close together. On the left, I think it's about 17 scars, you can see. On the right, it's about 52. So there's another tree, and what we can infer from that is that that tree in the Valle de May was growing in very open conditions. And I'd love to show you another graph which has just mysteriously disappeared from my PowerPoint presentation, which would have shown that as data. And it would show that the young trees in the Valley de May have a large height increment, and that the old trees going back to about 1910 have a very short height increment. So in other words, in 1910, the forest was very open. And now it is closed. That's what it's showing. And we know that also from historical records. Now, um, two other points. We looked at four other sites for their, and here are the same data for Font Pepere, Font Ferdinand, and for Curieux. And what you see is that the Valle de May has clearly got the oldest trees. It's the only site with trees which go back before the time of settlement. Curieux showed very good regeneration in the 19th century. And that's historically recorded. But then, at, evidently, at some stage in the, in the 19th century, there must have been a devastating fire, and then it's declined. And I'd just finish with some very brief conclusions. What these data show is, first of all, that it is a very slow-growing plant. Compared with other palms around the world, 
rainforest palms, it grows very slowly. The leaves are very long-lived, longer-lived than any other forest trees. The male trees can, in principle, be very long. They can live, we estimate, up to 950 years. Um, but those trees have disappeared. Um, as I was doing this and writing it up, I just realized what a devastating effect fire has had on the population structure of the Coco de Mer. Fire must be the biggest enemy, the biggest thing to be frightened about in the, uh, uh, um, in the Valley de Mer. All populations have been affected by fire to some extent. Valley de Mer probably less than most. And what you see from the historical data is that after fire, the forest recovers very, very slowly, if at all. And in Curieux, it didn't. The fires were so devastating, basically, the, the Côte de Mer stands were destroyed. Whereas the Valley de Mer has at least the least disturbed sites. And I just end with what I think are two fascinating historical photographs, which somehow bear out what I'm saying. The top is the oldest existing photograph of Côte de Mer, 1892. And what you see is very high trees, very tall trees, and nothing underneath. And almost certainly that was caused by fire. The fire swept through, killed the younger trees, killed all the germinating plants, and the only ones which survived were the tall emergent male trees. And of course, they lived for as long as they lived, and then they died, and there was no regeneration underneath it. So a fire is disastrous. And then in the bottom, you see the Valley de Mai in the 1930s. And the author complained that recent clearing of all the vegetation has converted these um, palm groves into a semi-cultivated plantation. They cleared out all of the younger trees and so on. And so the forest was open. And that's exactly what you can see in the data. If you look at these trees, the older trees, which germinated back to about 1910, have narrow um, spaces between the, the leaf scars, and then they begin to get longer. I could carry on talking for another hour or so, ladies and gentlemen, about our data, but I think I'm not allowed to. Thank you very much. <laughs>